living your life your style. I'm your host, Rochelle McCray. Today, we're at the Hall of Flame, a museum dedicated to the history of firefighters. But before we get started, let's take a look at what's coming up in the show. If you're in the market for a new car, we've got the place you should check out. Plus, we have great tips to help you turn that home office into a space you want to work in. And we'll tell you about a program that can help you keep your old electronics out of the landfill. All that and more on this episode of Arizona Living, Your Life, Your Style. We're here at the Hall of Flame Museum and I'm with the director, Peter Malloy. Peter, thank you for joining me. Well, thank you for inviting, for inviting me on the show. So this is a super exciting place to be. What is the Hall of Flame Museum? Well, it's a firefighting museum. It's the largest in the United States. We have over 35,000 square feet of galleries and over 100 pieces of restored fire apparatus plus dozens of other exhibits. What is the significance of the museum? Well, its significance is it, it really tries to save uh, fire apparatus, antique fire apparatus, okay. restore it and display it and interpret it to the public and uh, make the public aware of uh, the role of the fire service in the United States. Now it seems like there's a lot to see and a lot to do here. Do you have guides that can help or how would we get around the museum? Well, we have guided tours that are available by appointment. Uh, we also have a, a, a catalog that we give to each of our visitors. The major pieces are all numbered and they can read about those uh, pieces. What are some of the things that when we come to visit, we just can't miss? Well, the most important uh, thing is probably the, to, to look at the artifacts on display, uh, the wheeled artifacts, because they're the most striking. But we have lots of things on the walls of the galleries. We have uh, fire marks, which are kind of insurance marks that were done over the last 300 years that uh, people really like to see. We have a, a display of helmets and uh, uh, model fire engines. Uh, there's quite a bit of things for people to see. So it sounds like there's something really for the whole family because you just have so much to do. There is. There's, there's a lot of hands-on activities for kids. We have a fire safety area that includes a lot of things kids can do. They can learn fire safety behaviors, okay. climb down a fire pole and sit on a little, sit on a fire engine, things of that nature. Being the director, you must have at least a couple favorite pieces here in the museum. What would you say those are? Yeah, we, I do. I have a, there's a, an aerial truck in one of our galleries from Staten, Virginia. That's, it's a 1938. It's completely original, which I really like. It's significant uh, technologically and it's just that, that is my favorite. Uh, the next one was probably a 1930 Terrence Fox fire engine from uh, River Forest, Illinois that I really like. Absolutely. Well, Peter, we're going to be back with you a little bit later in the show. And if you want to find out more about the Hall of Flame Museum, just head to their website. Chronic pain affects so many Americans, and sadly, it's how many people become addicted to opioids. But the governor's office and other organizations are teaming up to help get people on the path to recovery. Here's Ryan's story on addiction. I had been a baseball player since I was four. I didn't want to play golf, but at 12, a kid on my baseball team asked me, hey, let's go play some golf. And we played nine holes and I was hooked. That summer I was playing tournaments and it was, it was my passion. And so right out of high school, I went to this small school in San Diego and I was playing golf. I was there on a partial academic scholarship, partial golf scholarship. It was amazing. People had this view of, of who Ryan was and he was great. He was fun, he was popular, he was athletic. It was a fun person to hang out with, but the pain inside was, was tough. Behind closed doors, the pain was masked by painkillers. At 25, I hurt my back, it sent me to the pain management doctor. I mean, I already, I'd already been abusing drugs for three years, off and on. And so that first script that I got from the pain management doctor was a bigger script than I'd ever seen of more stronger painkillers. And I was getting those every 28 days. And you give that to a 25-year-old that's already using opioids to numb an emotional pain, it was over. In 2014,
14, it led me to probably the, the lowest point in my life. My truck was repossessed. I was evicted from my apartment downtown and I was arrested for the first time in my life. I was just about to be 34 and I was arrested for the first time in my life. And it's directly linked to, to my addiction. But I came at a crossroads. I went through our right track program. I went through our intensive outpatient program. And I really wanted to stay on. And at the current time, there wasn't a position. And then about a month later, I got a call from Crossroads and said, hey, would you mind coming on as a peer mentor? And that was, that was it. Well, being able to work here, I get the opportunity to see how many lives that we can affect on a daily basis. Now we have about 300 beds and we're consistently full. And that tells me that there's a lot of people that need help out there. There's things that we can do to help prevent opioid epidemic from continuing. Communicate with your child. Now, if they do have a prescription of painkillers, have that talk with them. Help them understand the risk. Lock it up when you're not using it. Understand how many are in there, and then we're going back the next time, count them again. I mean, it's these simple, detail-oriented things that can, that can save your kid's life. If you or someone you love are struggling with a painkiller addiction or, or any addiction, you know, there's a website, rethinkrxabuse.org. This website has a plethora of information, whether you're trying to prevent something from happening or maybe you're already stuck in it and you're looking for a place to go get help. There's, there's a list of treatment centers, whether they're residential, outpatient. There's a whole list of great things that the state of Arizona is doing to help combat this opioid epidemic. Here's a good tip to protect your home. Check your smoke detectors once a month and don't forget to vacuum on the outside of them so you don't have any false alarms. Here's what's coming up next on Arizona Living. Great decorating advice to make any home office more chic and stylish. And buying a car just got easier thanks to Big Two Toyota of Chandler. home quite a bit, you need a space that's fun and energizing to be productive. Check out these tips from the experts at American Furniture Warehouse. Create a home office that's uniquely yours, where you can work, relax, collaborate, and meet with friends or clients. Get comfortable. Your office chair is the most important part of your office. An accent chair is a great way to keep the space professional, stylish, and comfortable. Find a desk that works for you, even if it isn't a traditional desk. If you have the space, adding a meeting nook with colorful chairs and an expandable table creates the perfect spot to meet and discuss projects, as well as give you a place to get away from the computer and relax. Cut down on clutter by storing all your office supplies and personal belongings in a bookcase or sideboard with drawers. Use vertical and horizontal storage options to maximize your space. Don't forget to add personal touches such as fresh flowers, family photos, and decorative accents. Create an office that inspires and motivates you to do your best work. The temps are rising and summer is almost here, which means it's time to hit the road. And what better way to do that than in a new car? I head to Big Two Toyota of Chandler to check out just how easy it is to get your new car. Looks good. All we're all good. good. Yep, we're good to go. Right. Thanks so much. No problem. Rochelle. Hi. Hey, Rochelle, how are you doing? Rick, I'm good. I'm in the market for a car because it's summer and I don't want to be stranded on the side of the road in an unreliable vehicle. Can you help me? Absolutely, no problem. Okay, so you guys have so many things to choose from here. How do I decide what's right for my family? Well, part of that is our job, but you are right. There's a lot of options. Toyota has about 20 models in just about every segment. But our job is to take you, ask a few questions, get a little bit more information so we make sure we find the right vehicle for you. Then we'll let you test drive it and make sure that it is the right car. We have just over a thousand new and used vehicles on the ground, just over a 15 acre facility. So we have something for just about everyone. 
whether that's a brand new Toyota, a pre-owned vehicle, or even one of our Toyota certified used vehicles. What makes the car buying experience different at Big Two? So when we built the facility, one of our biggest concerns was trying to make the car buying and servicing process a lot easier for our guests. You know, whether you look at the showroom, it's bright, open, and airy. It doesn't look like a typical car dealership. Most all of our models are indoors, where you can come and look at them in the air conditioning and themed areas. But we also took some time out to make some areas that are a little bit unique. So we did things like a cafe, um, manicures and pedicures. We also have a full-time massage therapist. We also thought about the kids involved because that also is, tends to be a little bit of a hard time sometimes when you're there with your kids and they're running everywhere. So we built a pirate ship playhouse for them. Oh, wow. And a game room so that they can spend plenty of time out of your way so that you can get your job done. You guys really have everyone covered, whether you have children or don't have children, you're in the middle of a work day or need to just kind of relax, it sounds like. Just about anything you can think of will make it easy for you. I see Big Two a lot in the community. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about how you guys are involved with different organizations around town. Well, it all goes back to Lon and Chris Hoy and their philosophy that you need to be involved in your community and give back wherever you can. Right now, our, our two biggest events that we are involved with is ICANN, which takes care of after-school youth children. And we also are involved with the ALS Association of Arizona. At the end of the day, it's more of a people business than it is a car business. And if you're out involved in your community, you can serve them a lot better. Most people think car buying can be a hassle. How does my experience differ here at Big Two Toyota of Chandler? Well, it's going to be pretty easy. One of our staff will come out and greet you. We'll spend some time asking you a few questions, get a little bit more information about what you need, what's the best fit for you. We'll let you get a chance to drive the car. We'll give you all the numbers and options that you could possibly have. You'll talk with one of our financial experts to make sure that we get you the best loan and package available and get you on the road. After such a fun shopping experience, I can hardly wait to show off my new car. After today, it's easy to see that when they built Big Two, they really did think about me and you. Time to go. Keep your family safe by having a fire extinguisher on hand. Look for one rated ABC, which means it can handle a grease fire or a paper fire. Coming up next, we take a look at Phoenix Fashion Week and all the style-making headlines. And don't toss that old laptop in the trash. Learn about a program that keeps electronics out of the landfill. Fashion Week always has exciting events. Let's take a look at all of the runway excitement. My name is Brian Hill. I'm the Executive Director of Phoenix Fashion Week. Phoenix Fashion Week is all about bridging designers and buyers. We're built on three pillars, fashion, education, and community. We kicked off Phoenix Fashion Week on Thursday night with Breast Cancer Awareness Month with Fashionly Pink. We brought in local celebrities, breast cancer survivors on the runway, raising money and awareness for local breast cancer charity. Don't be a chump, check for a lump. Thursday night also included Community Night, where 12 local designers kicked off two looks on the runway that you could actually shop right from the runway. Also on Thursday night, we awarded Lifestyle Designer of the Year from Tucson, Arizona, Cumulative. The winner of tonight and first night of Phoenix Fashion Week, how do you feel? Super excited. I don't know if it's hit me yet. Friday night at Phoenix Fashion Week, Contemporary Designer of the Year, that winner from West Palm Beach, Nouvelle Palm Beach. What an incredible title. How do you feel right now? I feel ecstatic, excited. I am really so happy and I'm so blessed that I was chosen. Also on Friday night, we awarded Accessory Designer of the Year, MCA Headbands, Phoenix, Arizona. So can you tell me just about how you feel? Uh, it's, it's an amazing feeling. I, I mean, I'm super stoked. All right, the winner of the Emerging Designer of the Year 2017, the tour, ready to wear, Akana, Phoenix, Arizona. Tell us, how do you feel after winning Couture Designer of the Year? I'm overwhelmed. I'm truly honored to, to uh, 
to be recognized. <laughs> I'm on such great talent um, that was up there today and huge weight lifted on my shoulders, proving to myself that this can be done, this can be my dream come true. Saturday night is all about the top 40 models. Someone's going to win model of the year, male and female, and get signed to the Agency Arizona for a full contract. All right, so the male model of the year 2017 at Phoenix Fashion Week is Milan! We are here with Milan and has just been named Male Model of the Year. Someone will get signed to the ADC Arizona and launch their career. Amanda! Amanda, how do you feel right now? I feel just unbelievable. <laughs> I cannot believe that this is life. I feel like I'm dreaming. It's the Business of Fashion Seminar Series where we had nine expert seminars happening every morning of Phoenix Fashion Week. We had experts talking about social media, business planning, manufacturing, how to sell big to buyers. The Phoenix Fashion Week has now become a launch pad for global designers to launch their brand in the United States. This year we have brands including Botswana, East Africa, Mexico, Philippines, Dubai, Kuwait, all came to Phoenix Fashion Week to build a better brand. We're back here at the Hall of Flame Museum and I'm with director Peter Malloy. Peter, there is a very significant part of this museum, the National Firefighting Hall of Heroes. What is that? It really sets us apart from every other uh, fire museum in the United States. It's a gallery dedicated to honoring the memories of all American firefighters who died in the line of duty from earliest times back as early as 1800 to the present day. Oh. It also includes, recognizes firefighters who've been decorated for heroism. So we're kind of a unique uh, facility there. We have over 10,000 names in our computerized database uh, that's available for visitors to examine. Now why would you say as a community it's important for us to honor those who have fallen? Well, for the same reason we honor uh, members of the military who die. They, they're, he they're heroes. Most of them died heroically. Mm -hmm. uh, they willingly risked their lives and gave up their lives and they should be honored. Now, I know there's a part of the museum where you have a section for wildland firefighters as well, and it's especially significant to us with the loss of the Granite Mountain hot shots. Can mm -hmm. you tell me a little bit more about that? There's no other museum in the United States that has a gallery dedicated to wildland firefighting. Mm -hmm. Our exhibit addresses all classes of, fire, of wildland firefighters, and it's quite a bit different than structural firefighting. Right. And the equipment that they use, the people who become wildland firefighters are, in many cases, very different from uh, structural firefighters and volunteers. Absolutely. Thank you so much for showing us around today. And of course, you're going to want to head to their website. Be sure to come and visit the Hall of Flame Museum. Coming up, see how Cox Communications is taking action to put your old electronics to good use. can be dangerous if they end up in a landfill. Check out this program from Cox Communications that's aiming to protect our environment. My name is Sheldon Caldwell Meeks. I'm Senior Community Relations Specialist with Cox Communications. Cox Conserves is led by Cox Enterprises. It is our way of being environmentally responsible and sustainable as a company. We know technology is always evolving and changing extremely quickly. We're always making sure that we're being responsible with all of these new technologies that are coming uh, today, but may be gone tomorrow. So it's our duty to make sure those things don't end up uh, hurting our environment, but that we're recycling properly and making sure they don't end up in a landfill. So my name is Gilbert Sanchez. I'm the production manager with STS Recycling Phoenix Branch. This is Strategic Telecom Supply and Solutions, also known as SDSS Recycling. This building holds e-waste recyclables from Cox. 
Right now on site we have 17 trucks from Cox here, equivalenting to 884,000 pounds of e-waste. Here we receive set-top boxes and modems, along with miscellaneous electrical cords and components. Our goal here is to have zero waste, meaning that nothing goes to the landfill, everything is recycled. At the end of every production line, nothing is, is trashed out of any of these cable units here. Our partnership with Strategic Telecom Solutions is a great one. They're an organization that helps us uh, recycle all the old set-top boxes that come in or any of the technology that our customers use so that they can break it down, uh, scrap it to its uh, component parts, and the parts that they can refurbish, they do. The parts that they can't, they recycle properly. A small revenue comes back from that process and goes right into Cox Charities, a program that puts money back into the community. We want to make sure things don't end up in a landfill and that they're properly recycled or reused in a way that betters our environment and the community. No, it kind of feels good that at the end of the day we're doing our part to make it, to make our recycling as efficient as possible and not, not contributing to the mess we got going on now. Working with Cox has been real good. Um, everybody's been real helpful as far as uh, when, they, when they ship us our product, um, they do their best to sort it before it gets here and keeping us all busy. Well, recycling is a big part of how we're going to reach our zero waste to landfill goal by 2024. Electronic recycling in particular. Uh, we provide ways for our employees to bring their old, outdated technology so it doesn't make its way to a landfill and it's properly recycled. Uh, in addition, we also provide ways for the community to bring their old and outdated technology so that it doesn't find its way into a landfill. It's properly destroyed and recycled. It's important at Cox Communications that we better the community in which we live and work. So if you have something that you're throwing away, just think twice before throwing it in the trash and find a way to properly recycle it. We want to thank everyone here at the Hall of Flame Museum for having us today. There really is so much to see and do. And it's a cool place to hold a kid's birthday party, office parties, and weddings. Just head to their website for details. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Arizona Living, Your Life, Your Style, where we help you live your best life.